Good morning. Hey, how is everybody today? I pray that you are well, that you are feeling victorious, and that you are feeling the joy of being in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I tell you, I, you don't feel, if you're like me, you don't feel so joyful every day. I had to post on my Facebook page yesterday because that's kind of how I was feeling. Find your joy. That's what the Lord was saying to me yesterday. I didn't feel it, but I had to dig for it. I got it back. Good morning, Donna. God bless you, my love. Good morning. Come on in the room and let's, let's get together. Let's visit and let's chat and let's see what the Lord has to say to us today. There is a great word from the Lord for us today. Hey, Jackie, I need to give you a call um, and, and just catch up with you. Good morning, Sister Joy, Sister Wanda. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. Come on in. There is such a great word from the Lord this morning. It's always good to see you all. Uh, we are grateful. I know that we're grateful. I want you to get it in your mind this morning, what you are grateful for. We have much to tell God thank you for. Um, and, and there's just a lot on my mind and a lot on my heart this morning. The Lord has, I, I've just been with the Lord and been in prayer and been in a very reflective mood. Have you ever been like that where there's just a lot going on and you're just reflecting on the goodness of the Lord? You're just in a very reflective mood and you can feel um, the, the presence of the Lord and he's speaking to you. Good morning, Miss Joe. Good to see you on this morning. Um, and just being grateful to the Lord. And so over the last couple of days, the Lord has just really been, been re revisiting some things with me um, that uh, I, I've heard before. And, and I wanted to share them with you. One of the things that I've heard the Lord remind me of over the last, good morning, Brother Bobby, over the last couple of days is this. Listen, accomplish what you set out to do. Good morning, Mother Dixon. Accomplish what you set out to do. In other words, stop procrastinating. Come on. That, good morning, Elder Battle. God bless you. That's for somebody this morning. It's for me, but it's for somebody else. When God gives you an idea, when you wake up with something in your mind, you need to accomplish something during in the course of a day. Stop putting it off. Accomplish what you set out to do in the course of a day. Look, if you don't get it done in the 24 hours, you won't have 25 hours tomorrow, right? You won't pick up extra time by putting it off. So accomplish what you set out to do. That's, that's one of the things uh, that, that, good morning, Sister Felicia. Hey, Shana, Shana, good to see you. All right, so listen, that's one thing. Get, get yourself organized. Bring, you know, one of the reasons that we spend a lot of time feeling frustrated, feeling um, uh, uh, like we're not accomplishing what we need to, feeling, here's the word, unfulfilled, is because we are undisciplined. Lord, help us today. And, and when I say we, I certainly mean me too. I need to see some thumbs up. I need to see some amens because I already know that I'm not the only one. Good morning, Hope. Come on, you might as well say amen. I'm not fussing. I'm helping us already. We are undisciplined. We're undisciplined in our exercise. We're undisciplined in our eating. We're undisciplined in, in, in our, uh, good morning, Marie, in undisciplined in what we want to accomplish. And so we spend a lot of time being frustrated and feeling unfulfilled. If anybody can relate to that, go ahead and say amen. Yeah. So let's accomplish what we set out to do. If we make up in our minds to do it, God will help us. Let's, Lord, help me to accomplish what I set out to do. Help me to accomplish 
what you set before me to do in the course of a day. That's one thing. All of it, I'm going to tie it all together in just a few minutes. All right. Secondly, listen, this is really, really, really important. The only way, listen, a lot of us want to do better. I know we do. But here is what the Holy Spirit said to me. The only way that we can do better, listen, is that we be better. Oh, God, do you see the difference? Because doing better requires us to be better. And being better is a heart matter. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Doing better starts with being better. God, I need to be better than I am. Oh, I'm telling you that thing has been working on me all week long. I need to be better. Lord, show me how to be better so that I can do better. All, listen, it doesn't matter what's going on in your head. If it never gets to your heart, change will never come. So in order... For us to be better, do better. Good morning, Deacon Shropshire. We've got to be better. So God, help me to be better so that I can do better. Oh, Lord, help me today. That's the second thing. And the third thing is going to really set us free. This is the third thing the Lord has spoken to me over the last few days. But in, in, in all of the accomplishing what we set out to do. And in all of the being better so that we can do better, here's the really, really good news. That we can rest in the confidence that we have in God's capacity. Did you hear that? Don't get upset. Don't get bent out of shape. The Lord says, go ahead and rest in the confidence that we have not in our capacity, but in his capacity. Well, what is capacity? Capacity is the maximum amount that something can contain or accomplish. So the maximum amount that God can contain or accomplish is he can contain it all. He can accomplish it all. So we're not leaning on our capacity. We're not resting in our capacity. We are resting in his capacity. Do you hear the difference? So as we set out to accomplish what we set out to do, as we lean into being better so we can do better, we do it all through leaning into our confidence in his capacity to help us. So it's not about us. It's all about him. I hope that is encouraging you this morning. I had to find my joy. Because I was feeling like, listen, I'm setting out to do stuff and I'm not getting it done. I'm not, I'm not being better. That's why I'm not doing better. And I was struggling with my joy. It was robbing me of my joy. So I had to fight through it. I had to fight through that thing just yesterday. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, listen, find your joy. You're making this about you. But if you will find confidence in my capacity, you will accomplish what you set out to do. You will be better and you'll do better and you'll rest in the confidence in my capacity and not yours. I hope that helped you. Now let's jump into this word that ties this all together. And that's in Psalm 62. Where David says to us, trust only in God. Come on. Don't put your confidence in man. Don't put your confidence in yourself. Don't put your confidence in your capacity. Don't put your confidence in what you know. But David says, Put your confidence only in God. Only in God. Only in God. Look at what he says in verse 1. He says, truly my soul silently waits for God. Silently here indicates trust that is both patient and uncomplaining. Patient and uncomplaining. Listen. That's what God is calling us to do today. He says, put your confidence in my capacity, but be patient 
and uncomplaining. Somebody write that in your comments today. I choose to put my confidence in his capacity and while he's working for me to accomplish what he set before me, while I'm trusting him to help me to be better so that I can do better, I'm going to put my confidence in his capacity and I'm going to be uncomplaining while I wait on him. I'm not going to get rattled. I'm not going to lose my joy. I'm not going to lose my focus. I'm going to wait patiently and uncomplaining while God is working in me. Do you realize today that God is working on you? That God is working his will in you? That God is bringing you full circle? That everything that he has ordained for you because you have a heart for him because you have a desire to please him because it is your will to glorify him in your life that God is working in you and through you to bring that to pass listen here's what I'm saying keep your heart open to him oh God keep your heart and your mind open to him it it listen and as you remain open to him God is working in you he's bringing it to pass his capacity to perform in you is unlimited what is it that God cannot do wait patiently for him God is working in you to will and to do his good pleasure oh come on that's good news don't get like me yesterday I was a little out of sorts I had to find my joy. Anybody ever have to go back and get your joy? You allowed the enemy to tell you that you just weren't getting it done, that you're not enough, that you 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 need to be better than you are. Well, we do need to be better. We do need to be better, but it, we can't be better on our own. It's through his capacity that we become better. And it is through his capacity that we do better. And it's through his capacity that we accomplish. It's no goodness of our own. So David says in Psalm 62 and 1, my soul silently stop murmuring, stop complaining, stop listen, and stop fault finding even in yourself. Stop fault finding even in your, this is wrong with me. I'm not as good as that. I'm not that. No, no, no. Strike that from your vocabulary. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, you can. You can accomplish what you set out to do. You can be who God created you to be. But guess what? It is through his capacity. It is through putting your confidence in him. Put no confidence in man, in yourself or any other man. It is through him. It is through trusting in his capacity to bring to pass everything that he has ordained for your life. David goes on to say that, you know, he, he, he keeps, he preserves us. He, it is through him that we are saved, but not just saved. Yes, we are saved eternally, but it is the Lord who preserves our lives. It is the Lord who keeps us alive. You know, we say it, but I want you to grab this today. He, he keeps us from dangers seen and unseen. The psalmist exhorts us to wait on the Lord. In other words, we should live, listen, in a habitual state of faith. Are you waiting on the Lord? Not sitting around with your arms folded, but this waiting is a state of expectation. Are you in a, a habitual state of expectation? Are you expecting to be blessed? Are you expecting to be healed? Are you expecting to be provided for? Are you expecting to excel? Come on. I expect, even at this stage in my life, I'm, I'm not done. I expect to excel. I know there is still more in me. Somebody write it in your comments. There's more in me. God is still pulling out of me what he put in me. I expect to excel in everything that God has called me to be and do. I live in a habitual state of faith 
and expectation from God. I'm still reaching. I'm still climbing. You know, listen, remember that song years ago? I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. No, baby, I'm not on the rough side of the mountain. I'm just climbing because I'm still reaching. I'm still accomplishing. I'm still striving, but I'm still reaching. I'm still excelling. I'm still, uh, listen, I'm still contributing. Come on. The, uh, it ain't the rough side. It's the excelling side. It's the contributing side. It's the accomplishing side. God is still. Still pulling out of me. There's still more in me. Come on. Is there still more in you? I expect to excel. That's what this psalmist is saying. I expect. I'm waiting on God. Even listen. Even as I'm accomplishing this. I've got my eye on more. Come on. I'm expecting God to get more out of me. I'm expecting God to do more through me. I'm expecting God to do more in me. And I'm expecting God to do more with me. My God. Somebody ought to give God a praise for a life of expectation. You know when I'm going to be done? When my eyes are closed and I open them in glory. That's when I'm through. <laughs> Until then... I'm expecting, I live in a habitual state of expectation from God. A state of persistent and perpetual faith. Listen to the words that David uses to describe God. He says, he is my expectation. He says, I live in hope, a confident hope in God. My hope, look, I'm not just wishing no, no, no. My, 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 I have a confident expectation of God. And my confidence is in his capacity to deliver, to perform it. My, 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 my confidence is not in my capacity, but it is in his capacity. Somebody write in the comments, it's in his capacity. Come on. Capacity. His capacity is unlimited. His capacity is unlimited. God is my expectation. My expectation is in his unlimited capacity. But not only that, he is my rock. Listen, God is my rock. My feet are planted solidly on the rock. The, the, the rock is my confidence. Listen, I'm solid. I'm secure. So what if, when I say he's my rock, listen, I have security. I have security in him. So I, listen, I understand that the storms are coming. I understand that the winds are going to blow. I understand that life is going to come with challenges and with difficulty. And listen, with heartache and with pain. But I am secure in him. You ought to write that down. You ought to testify to yourself. I am secure on the rock. The rock is Jesus. I'm secure. I'm not going to fall. No, I will not fall. I, and I will not fail. Glory to God. I won't fail. No. Why? Because I am standing solidly on the rock of my salvation. That rock is Jesus. Yes, I am sure. Why? Because I am confident in his capacity to sustain me. Oh my God. You know, the Lord's been dealing with me over the last few days. I'm going to teach this. I need to study it, but I'm going I'm to give you a teaser now. You know, uh, Jesus said to Peter, 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 uh, Satan des desires to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Listen, the Lord spoke this to me a few weeks ago. I got to study it out so I can really teach it right. But you know what? The what, It keeps coming to me that I survived my sifting. Oh God, did anybody survive being sifted? You, if, if any of you ever had a grandmother that had a sifter, listen, any, anybody had a grandmother that, that, that had a sifter and you've seen her take that flower, you know how fine 
flour already is. But when she's making a certain kind of cake, she would take that sifter and, and take that flour and put it in the sifter and, and, and turn that handle on that sifter and the sifter just to turn and she's sifting that flour and you see even the sifter made the flour more fine when you are being sifted that means you are going through some stuff I mean you going through you need Jesus to survive your sifting but let me tell you something some of us have already been sifted but we came out on the other side finer than when we went through God did some stuff while we were being sifted let me tell you something we will not go through without coming out with the goods. Why in the world would I go through all that I've been through and come out empty handed? Listen, if you're going to go through, you might as well come out with something. That's what, that's what this is telling us, that we will not go through and fall. I'm standing on the rock. I have security in God. Not only is he my expectation? Not only is he my salvation, not only is he my rock, he is my defense. Do you know that you have a defender? Listen, God only allows so much. And then he says, that's enough. Oh, somebody write it in the comments. That's enough. <laughs> ah, oh my God. He knows how to say that's enough. He knows how to say that's enough. He is your defender. Sometimes it feels like the enemy is running crazy. But I want you to know this morning that God holds the that's enough. Woo! He's a that's enough God. He knows how to say that's enough. And listen, he has the capacity to stop it and to cause the enemy to back up. The devil can't do to you what he wants to do. We serve a that's enough God. My God. I, I, I Deacon Shropshire. Now listen here. Don't start playing with me this morning. Because I'm ready to run too. I'm ready to run around this table. Because I know there have been times in my life. When God told the devil that's enough. When I was at my breaking point. God told him that's enough. I, when the Lord knew that if one more thing had piled on. I wasn't going to make it. But God let me get right there. When I cried out to him and said, Lord, I can't take another minute. Not another second. Not another day. And God said, that's enough. Listen, God knows when it's enough. He is your defense. He knows how to back the enemy up. He knows how to back him off. He knows how to stop him in his tracks. And right at that moment, you know how when a glass is full and one more drop will call it to cause it to spill over. God, we serve that God that knows when one more drop will spill over. So listen, don't worry about breaking. We serve the God that knows when enough is enough. <laughs> we serve a God who knows how to defend us. That's enough. So don't worry about breaking. You serve, but that's enough, God. My God. And the psalmist not only says that, he says that he is my glory. Listen, what is the glory? Any greatness that is in, it, in you, any honor that is in you, any power that is in you, it's because of the God that is in you. Come on. He is your greatness. He is your honor. He is your power. Any greatness in you, any honor in you, any power in you, it is because of the God that is in you. And the psalmist goes on to say, and he is my strength. Come on. He is my strength. Don't you love that song? Strength like none other. That is reaching to me. Listen, God is reaching to you in your moments of weakness. In that moment when you feel like you cannot go on. His strength is reaching to you. The word of the Lord says, in my weakness, he, when I am weak, then I am strong. For in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. A lot of us don't want to appear weak. We want to always feel like we are large and in charge and like we can handle it. I want to say to you this morning, beloved, 
When you're weak, go ahead and be weak. We don't have to try to impress people. We don't have to try to be strong when we know we're weak. Listen, when you can't handle it, just say, God, I need your strength. Because the word of the Lord says when you weak, that's when you're really strong. When you stop relying on yourself and realize that without God, you can do nothing. Without God's strength, you can't make it anyway. The psalmist says, he is my strength. But not only that, he is my refuge. He is the place that I go to to be safe. The word of the Lord says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> oh my God. And the righteous run in and are safe. Mm. Ooh, you ever needed a safe place? Just a place where you could just be you. That's him. That's him. You can be a child. Just, just you know, you can just be yourself. You don't have to try to impress because he already knows you. He already knows your weaknesses. He already knows your fears. He already knows your doubts. He already knows. So you can just go ahead and take the mask off and be yourself in his presence. And the Bible says, for in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh God, thank you for your word, Father. So this morning I pray for us. I pray for myself as I pray for you. That we'll make up in our minds to accomplish what we set out to do. What the Lord sets before us. Let's not get distracted and derailed and lose focus. Let's pray for focus. Let's live, listen, let's live more disciplined lives. Lack of discipline is a robber and a thief. It incapacitates. It cripples us. And so let's purpose in our hearts today to live more disciplined lives. In every area of our lives. Let's not live wanton and unfocused and randomly. But let's live, let, let's submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we can live more disciplined, more productive, more constructive lives so that we can accomplish what we set out to do. Let's remember that the only way to do better is to be better. So let's let the Holy Spirit do the work on the inside. It's a heart matter. Lord, fix my heart. If I can be better, I'll do better. It all begins with the heart, not the head. I want to I want to do better. But in order for me to do better, I have to be better. Lord, fix those broken places in me. Those places that cause me to be undisciplined. Those places in me that cause me to be easily distracted. Those places in me that cause me not to forgive. Those places in me that cause me to, 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 to not do the right thing. Whatever they are, Lord, fix those places in me so that I can be my best self and then I'll do my best work for you. Listen, that's what the Lord wants. When I am my best self, then I can do my best work. Does that make sense? Somebody write that. When I can be my best self, put it in your comments. When I can be my best self, then I can do my best work. Yeah, that, that's, that's what it takes. That's what it's called for. But the good news is that we can rest in the confidence that we have in God's capacity and not our own. And not our own. Because we can't, we can't do it. I promise you, we can't work hard enough. I remember... Um, and, and I'm done. I remember a few years ago, I had some real 
ministry frustrations. I just felt like I should be accomplishing more. And I still do. I honestly, I feel like I should have accomplished more, but I, I don't get as frustrated as I used to. But you know, and I wanted to do more and be better. And I and and I was disappointed and frustrated. And I was work but I was working really hard. And I remember so clearly the 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 Holy Spirit said to me, Faye, you can't work hard enough to make this work. And then he reminded me of the scripture. It is not by might nor by power, but is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Did you hear that? It is not by might, not by my strength, not by my power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's the Lord speaking now. So listen, if you're frustrated, if you feel unfulfilled, if you feel like you're not accomplishing all that you can or should, perhaps you are like me or like I was, maybe you're trying to do the work. And yes, you must do your part, but I want you to yield to him and to his capacity. Let God arise. And he'll help you to accomplish what you set out to do. He'll help you to be better so that you can do better. As you trust in your, put your confidence in his capacity. You'll get it done. Amen. I pray this word has blessed you. I want to charge you and challenge you even as he charges and challenges me to be our best selves for his glory. Let's purpose to do one thing today, just one, in obedience to his spirit that will move us forward in being our best selves. Amen. Will you do it? If you will, write in the comments, I'll do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your people and for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that charges and challenges us. Thank you, God, that we declare, we decree by faith that we will yield ourselves to you. That daily we declare that we will be better so that we can do better as we put our confidence in your capacity and not our own. Bless your word and seal it in our hearts, minds, and spirits. Help us to accomplish what you've set before us daily. Take the excuses out of our mouths and help us to say what you say so that we can be our best selves. And it's all for your glory. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining today again. Come on. Write it in. I'll do it. I see it. Thank you. Make that confession. Let's start an I'll do it parade. <laughs> Bishop always tells us let's start a victory parade. So let's start an I'll do it parade. I want to see your comments. I'll do it. We'll do one thing today as the Spirit of God leads us. We'll be open to hear what the Spirit is saying and whatever he says for us to do today I'll do it. Let's make that confession. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day as you are open to what the Spirit says to you. I love you, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.